We begin with one of the most controversial and divisive bills this legislative session now headed to the Florida Senate. The full House vote on what would be Florida's strictest abortion bill in recent history came after midnight Thursday, along with protests from the gallery that disrupted debate. Hours of debate that changed no minds. The bill limits abortions after 15 weeks without exceptions for victims of rape or incest that result in pregnancy. It does provide exceptions for medical conditions that threaten the life of the mother and for fetal, uh, fatal fetal abnormalities where the child would die at birth or soon after. Such was the case for State Representative Robin Bartleman, Democrat from Weston. That amnio is given the earliest at 16 weeks. A bodily anomaly scan, the earliest can be given is at 18 weeks. So when you get that terrible, heartbreaking news, you don't even have a decision because the state of Florida has already taken it away from you. Think about that, Floridians. Think about that. When you get that news, you and your husband and your family have no decision. Representative Bartleman joins us live from Tallahassee now. It is great to have you. Um, we were together post midnight after that vote. Um, yours, Representative Bartleman, was one of those speeches among several from people, women, who shared really intensely personal experiences on both sides of the debate. And, and I wonder if you would just fill viewers in for us to start on, on what that was about. Well, I have to tell you that never in a million years would I ever think that I was gonna have an abortion. And the story I shared last year, and then I shared more of it this year, had to do with finding out that my much wanted pregnancy, a pregnancy that I went through infertility treatment to get, that my fetus had an abnormality. And my husband and I were told at that time that we would have to make a decision as to whether or not to keep the pregnancy. And so I spoke about the decision-making process we had. I'm a special ed teacher, so I wasn't afraid of that, but I was afraid of what would happen to the fetus if it had a 50-50 chance of uh, survival rate. What would happen if I found out that the fetus had its uh, the two sides of its brain fused together, or if the fetus once upon birth, we found out that the, we needed to be on a kidney transplant list, or what would happen to my family? What would, what, would we be able to afford this? Would we be able to get all of the therapies? Would we have to keep our job? What would the quality of life be for this, this baby that I really wanted? Would the baby sit in pain? It was, it's so heart wrenching, but it was my decision. It was a decision for me, my husband, my doctor and my God. And now Florida politicians have inserted themselves into that decision-making process. Like I said, I want the women of Florida to be very clear. I wanna be very clear with them. They don't think that they're ever gonna to have to make a decision about an abortion when we know that the numbers are one in four women will have an abortion. But when you get that news, when you get those amnio, result, amnio results, when you find out that there's something terribly wrong after that uh, body scan of the fetus, you are going to have no decision to make. Uh, Just think about that. Uh, Robin, it's such a scary thought. Yeah, let me jump in here if I may. Uh, I watched some of your speech on tape on the Florida Channel. It was just tremendously riveting. The house hung on every word that you said. Afterwards and after the vote, did some of your colleagues, Republicans, Democrats, come up and speak to you in a personal way to respond to your, your story? Yes, I think um, definitely. We all empathize with all of the stories we heard and all of the choices that women had to make. We had women share on the floor for the first time that they were raped. Um, it was just such an emotional night. And yes, and the, I think what happens is, is people don't think that it's gonna happen to them. And I said on the floor, but for the grace of God, there go I. And when you talk about these decisions, there are gray areas. There are, there are very emotional decisions to be made. An abortion, having an abortion is a very personal decision. And I can tell you, it's a very difficult decision. I luckily, we went in that day and we didn't have to make it because the heartbeat was gone, but we went in that day. And I can tell you up until that last second, I couldn't decide what to do. 
But the fact of the matter is, is that I deserved to make that decision. It was my decision to make. It was my decision with my husband. It was my decision. I had to think about my my other daughter, Emma. Um, and the Florida politicians are taking that decision away from you. And that's what I want Floridians to hear. So some of the Florida, those Florida politicians are women. In fact, during this program, we will hear from another one of your colleagues who shared her rape and her decision about her abortion too. And we're gonna play that from Representative Tobolsky. But uh, right now, I, I just wanted to bring up that some of the politicians who are firmly supporting this very restrictive bill are Republican women, one of them who, whom sponsored the bill, uh, Aaron Grohl of uh, Vero Beach, Republican of Vero Beach, whose floor speech closing out this debate, she said, if a child is too expensive or inconvenient, it becomes access acceptable to terminate a child. That is unacceptable. And her, her, like so many, she has a faith-based opposition that it seems really no debate can change. And I wonder if you would address that. I'm not gonna change Representative Grawl's mind. I, I love Representative Trubolsky and her situation. That's her truth and she regrets it. And I, my heart breaks for her. I saw her the day after I went up to the floor and gave her a hug. But the fact of the matter is, it's not that it's inconvenient. It's that children will be born placed immediately on a transplant list. Children will be born that will have absolutely no quality of life. It's more, it's, it's more than expenses. It's about, do you want to bring a child into the world suffering? If you look at the list of fetal anomalies, and it's quite extensive, it's not all what you think. It, like people go, oh, it has to do with, you don't wanna have a Down syndrome baby. No, you, you don't wanna have, a, I had a student in my class, which this should have been incompatible with life, but, at my school, she had anencephaly. That means she was born with a brainstem. She had no cerebral cortex. She couldn't think. She, there, there was nothing, no feeling, no emotion, no thought process. G-tube, uh, diapers her whole life, uh, respiratory therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy. There, there has to be something to said about the, the quality of life. And in, in situations of rape, that is such a personal decision. There was testimony about an 11 year old child, an 11 year old child. The mother had no idea that the child was being raped by the stepfather. The child had no idea that she was pregnant. This is a child. And by the time the mother found all of this out, it would have been, it was past 15 weeks. And that child would have been forced to have a child under this law and be re-traumatized. Let's talk about sex trafficking victims who can't get away from from their, their, their pimp who can't get away from their situation, whoever's holding them, whoever's making them do that. And if they finally break free 15 weeks and two days, they do not have the choice to terminate their pregnancy. This is so personal and it really has to be made between the woman, the doctor, uh, if she's married with her spouse and her God. And not everyone believes in God and not everyone yeah believes that life is at conception. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't believe in abortion and that didn't work for you or it's against your religion, then don't have an abortion. Yeah. Uh, but for Robin, everybody else, we deserve that choice. We, we, we understand and we understand that argument. We're gonna hear the other one from Representative Barrero in a minute. Let me ask you about this. We have heard for the last year, particularly from Governor DeSantis, talking about the importance, how personal choice is supreme in the state of Florida, that there should be no mask mandates because that violates the right of personal choice and personal responsibility, and Florida is the state of freedom. Uh, does it strike you that that all seems to apply except when it comes to a woman's right to choose whether to have an abortion or not? It's incredibly hypocritical. That's what I have to say to that. I have neighbors that say, I don't want a vaccine. It's my choice, it's my body, what I put into my body. The same goes for the right to have, abortion, to have an abortion, which is healthcare. Women have the right to have a safe, the right to access a safe legal abortion. And it's my freedom and my choice to make that decision. And the fact of the matter is, is that the state of Florida, which is supposedly the freest state, 
has the most restrictive law abortion ban in its history. So very incredibly hypocritical. Do you think that part of that, if this, this law, this bill, mirrors Mississippi's that's now in front of the Supreme Court, do you feel like this is an element of politics on the way to possibly trying for a ban on abortions outright? Have you heard talk of that in the Capitol? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think this is the first step. I think that this violates federal law under Roe versus Wade. I think it. people say, well, this is a science-based decision. Well, the science says that we don't know what's going on with that fetus until you have that body scan at 18 weeks or until you have that amniocentesis at 16 weeks. Um, and they're, they're ignoring all of that. They're ignoring that families deserve to have the opportunity to make decisions for themselves. Not only that, it's only less than 3% of abortions occur after 15 weeks. Right. right. We so understand. I would venture to speculate and say that those abortions are wanted pregnancy, and it's because they've gotten some traumatic, terrible news about that fetus. And they need to make a decision as to for their family, for the quality of life for that fetus. And so it's just upsetting to me that we talk about uh, freedom and liberty and the right not to wear a mask and the right not to have a, you know, a vaccine. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and impose this on the women of Florida. We, it, it, it's so uh, I, I get very emotional because this is so I personal think, for me. I yeah. think you have women watching the right. Robin, this could think, happen to you. Yeah. Robin, and you I think are you, stuck now. Sorry. You have earned the right to be emotional and to your point of view. And we respect it. And we thank you for your honesty, your brutal honesty and standing on the floor of the Florida House and now this morning talking about it. Thanks very much. Appreciate you. Thank you guys. Thank you for everything you do for South Florida and keeping us informed. Thanks.